Hello everyone and welcome back to Max TV Original. In today's episode we're going to be refurbing and customizing CDJ uh, by Pioneer. It doesn't matter which model you have, you can customize whichever one you want. So we will be doing two parts. First of all we're going to be refurbing it. I've got two of them. One of them is in really great condition. So I will not be refurbing that because it's, it's virtually brand new. And uh, the second part, we're going to be uh, replacing the lights to make them custom. So let's have a look at condition of this one. The ring itself, where you touch here, it's quite sticky and dirty as you can see. I'll show you the uh, sneaky way of removing that sticky stuff from any um, older rubberized plastic. Some remotes have that and if you noticed it they are really sticky and unpleasant to handle and there's an easy way to remove it. I found out about this way uh, just recently. I tried everything. I've tried isopropyl alcohol, I've tried all sorts of solvents and it, it makes it gooey but it doesn't remove it. Uh, there's an easy way to do that. Second one, the ring itself, the silver one, as you can see around, it's uh, got paint, that metalized paint missing, so we're going to be respray painting that with a chrome. And uh, other thing in refurbing, we're going to be polishing the glass. As you can see, it does have a few scratches in the center and on the main uh, perspex glass, so we're going to be doing that. That's a refurb. The second part of customizing, uh, I'll do the second CDJ of shot, but in this one we're going to be changing LEDs. As you're aware, those LEDs, they are uh, orange and green. Let me turn it on. So I'm going to turn the top light off so you can see better. As you can see, the Q light is orange and the play light is green. So I'll also show you how to replace that button if the button gets stuck. I've actually got to replace this one because sometimes you press play and it just slows down. Uh, so, so it's a false trigger. I'll probably replace those LEDs. I'll leave vinyl as blue. The CDJ I might change it to another color, maybe purple, I'll see. And replace that LED to make it fully custom. Let's start by uh, opening it up. So I'm going to inject the disc that is in there. Here is the back of it. I'm also going to clean this rust off the metal. Probably erase that. Now there are six screws that are holding the top control panel to the bottom chassis. There are two on this side, two on this side, one in the center here and one in the back right here. So we're going to remove all those screws and then we'll lift the top off. The screws have been removed so we're going to flip it carefully right side up. And I'm going to have to put it sideways just to show you. So one, this, uh, put the CDJ to your left and then carefully lift the whole top off and to your right, just as if you are opening the book from the back, back page. You will find a uh, ribbon cable here holding the two parts together. So then we're going to loosen this little tab that's holding the cable. Don't have to unscrew it, just loosen it and push it aside. Now carefully wiggle the cable out of those little things that are holding it and holding by the plastic pull it up. So that's the top part disconnected completely. So we will start with the top part and I'll put the bottom one aside. Uh, there's also rubbers that has been removed. There's supposed to be a little foam sticker that pushes the cable neatly to the plastic so it doesn't rattle around inside. So we'll remove that as well, replace that as well. So we'll take the actual drive and the main chassis out of the picture for now. The first we're going to remove is the Q and play buttons. There are uh, one, two, three, four, five, six screws that I'm going to remove. Actually, I'm going to remove all the screws from here and then I will come back. Now I have removed all the screws from surrounding. I haven't touched the center yet. So we're going to unplug those cables. Just pull it up and out. And now we're going to remove this board. So simply lift it up and then unplug the cable just out as well. Make sure you hold by the blue tab. Don't pull the cable because you can rip the blue tab off it and you'll have problems then. So this is the board that contains the play button. button and the Q button, also the scan forward and track forward. We're going to be replacing the play button with the substitute. Uh, it's a square button, but it does not matter if it's a square or it's, uh, you know, a circle one. Uh, so 
again you can buy replacement buttons on eBay and they're gonna be pricey or you can simply buy a tactile switch and replace it they're gonna be very cheap you know you can buy hundred of them for a couple of dollars with the LEDs those two green ones are the for the SD card memory uh, I'll probably put those two orange ones instead of greens just to make it different uh, the green ones the clear ones they're actually green I'm going to be replacing with uh, white ones so I've got three millimeter white LEDs here and those orange ones I will be replacing with the blue ones now I'm using I'm not using diffu uh, clear ones so for the reason that I've remember a while back I've replaced them with clear ones and because they have very high brightness the buttons were glowing super bright it was blinding bright so this time I'm going to be putting diffused ones now we're going to replace the LEDs and the button if you are familiar with electronics and know how to do it, then there is no problem, you can skip a bit forward. But if you're not familiar of um, electronics and how to replace it, uh, the LEDs have polarity. And the easy way to identify it is to have a look at them sideways. And you can just see, it's hard to see on the camera, so I've printed out a little printout for you, that's what it looks like, uh, the LED you will notice there's two wires coming out of it. One is the long one. If you have brand new LEDs, like those ones, notice that one leg is longer than the other. The one is a long one is the positive. So I'll draw it here. Obviously not proportional, but that'll do. That's the positive. And the shorter leg is the negative. So I'll draw it as a short one. So that's how you know polarity. The LED uh, also inside, you can see the positive always has a little tiny contact, while the negative has the bigger contact. Again, if you're looking at LEDs, you will be able to notice that. Probably not on there, but oh, actually you can. You can just see that this is the negative side and this is the positive, just like on the picture. Let me see if I can, yeah. So either way, let's try blue one. Yeah, you can just see the reflection that it's, it's large leg is the negative. So best way is looking at the LEDs where the positives are. And I can see they on this side. And just take a little red texture and mark a dot next to the positive. So when you're reinstalling the LEDs, you know the right polarity. With a button, it doesn't matter. You can put it either way. With the LEDs, you have to make sure the polarity is the same. So just put a red dot, and where are the green ones? So now, when you're putting in new LEDs, you will know which way to put them in. So let's desolder the LEDs now. Uh, there are a few methods. I will be using desoldering gun, but again, if you're new to it, you may not uh, have a desoldering gun. So we're going to use a simple soldering iron and first what I'm going to do is take an epoxy if you don't have an epoxy uh, I suggest you get one <laughs> or you can just uh, use a solder wire so I will try uh, with a solder wire and what we're going to do is just to add a little bit extra onto the existing contacts some fresh solder this will make the desoldering easier if you do use flux you simply add a drop and that will easily get the contacts. You can see they're becoming really shiny. So now they are bent, so you have to bend them out. Uh, you can use the tip like that. Let me just clear it so you can see. And then using that as a little shovel, make sure you melt the solder first. Have I sold it? No, I have this one. And try lifting it up, but do it very carefully. Don't apply too much pressure because you don't want to leave the track. So you do the first one and then you do the second one, the second leg. So now they're right up. Next step, you can either use a desoldering wig or you can heat them up holding from one side. You hit them up on this side and you pull it out just like that the LED is out uh, you can install the new LED by simply 
Uh, pressing, that would be the white ones, yes. Uh, by simply, again, that's a red dot, so the long wire goes to the red dot. And you can hold it with a finger like that, and just hit that side until it pokes through, then align the second leg, then hit them both together and push the LED all the way in. Just like that. So once the LED is fully in, use the solder and just tag them properly so the LED makes sure it sits straight. Then using a snips, just simply cut the wires. What is this? Oh, they shot across the room. So that's the LED. The next method you can do is uh, try using a solder wick with a flux. And try sucking all the solder off the LEDs. So you can see it sucked the solder in. And you can see two holes. Uh, now you can try bending the legs upwards. And again, pull the LED out by hitting the pads. And then applying a bit more of a solder wick or desolder wick to clear the pads. So you can see two holes in there. Then you'll put the new LED in and solder it in. I, however, will be using a desoldering gun because that is a lot easier and faster. So I'll simply have to put it on the angle, push the button and it's done. Now I can bend the legs. You can see the LED is already loose. So I can bend them upright and the LED simply falls out. Uh, let's do the button as well. So again, I'm gonna add, even if you're using desoldering gun, you're gonna wanna uh, tin them first, like refresh the solder. So I'm gonna add a bit of a fresh solder and then using a desoldering gun, simply desolder the button and it comes right off. There is the old button. And then install the new button. Bend the contacts slightly. I do recommend bending them for the buttons. Doesn't matter if you bend them for LEDs because the LEDs are stationary, but button is always using the pressure from the fingers and you do want it to be stable. So bend them outwards. Solder the first pad. Then push on the button slightly to make sure it's firm and reflow it and then solder the second contact. And there we have it. The new button is installed. It doesn't matter that it's not a circular one as long as it's the same height and you can see that those buttons are the same height. So now we have a new button that would work properly. I'm gonna replace all the LEDs and I will come back. So I have completed the board. As you can see, I've got the new button. I've got the white LEDs for play, the blue ones for Q. And I've moved the Q LEDs that used to be orange into the SD card. So those two LEDs will be indicating if the card is in. And I've moved them to orange. Originally they were dull green. So after you've done the soldering, always take a paint thinner or a flux remover. I use paint thinners. They Lacquer thinners, they're usually really good. Just a cotton bud and everywhere where you sold it, just make sure you clean it up very nicely with the lacquer thinner. Remove all the flux that is left. So after you've done all that, the board is ready. And let's move on to the next part. I have already removed all the screws around. So you will need to remove the screws from that metal part first and lift it off. Now we find our pitch adjustment board and the main display board. So we're going to remove them both at the same time. Again, everything is unscrewed. You can disconnect the pitch adjustment board, but I'm going to um, leave it on. Actually, I will remove it. 
because we're going to be changing that LED. So that's what it looks like. Now we've only got the face left. So let's move on to this part. To remove the pitch adjustment board, you simply pull those tabs out, just like so, and carefully remove the wires. Just wiggle it, don't bend them. They are very um, easily bendable, so you don't want to bend them. So now the pitch adjustment board is ready. You can clean that off. If your pitch is not working well or it's jumping, you can always add a little bit of a contact cleaner inside there and just work it. In this case, it works fine. So we've got our um, master tempo LED and we've got our tempo reset LED. This uh, is a calibration for it, so we're not going to touch it. Make sure you don't touch it because it's set and it's working. So if, it doesn't, if it's not broken, don't break it. So I'm going to replace those two LEDs. And then I'm going to replace those LEDs here. I have finished replacing all the LEDs, so I've went for the pitch and tempo, both of the LEDs are multicolored, so that's the ones that are changing color slowly. And for this one, I've uh, put the two original orange LEDs for the CDJ and left blue for the vinyl mode. Uh, the loop, uh, in, loop, out and re-loop, I've uh, replaced with a warm white. The cues uh, record and uh, play are left as red and green, but the yellow one or orange one I've replaced with purple, so there's three purples. And the reverse I've replaced from red to purple as well. So that's how you customize it. Now let's move on to the restoration part. Now let's pull the rest of it apart. So we're going to be removing all the buttons. They simply pull out all of the stuff. And that's going to go straight to washing. There's nothing metal in it. You can simply put it in a sink and use some dishwashing liquid with a toothbrush and clean them all off. That's what I usually do. You can easily put them back in. They only go one way. There's no way you can mix up all the buttons. Also those reflectors. And there is another one that is an LED guide for the light guide for the uh, SD card. I'm going to get that out as well. Now let's remove the center part. Simply unscrew one, two, three, four screws. There's a fifth one here that I've removed earlier. And as you can see, the center part simply comes off. This one is easily removed by the top. Just remove those two screws. And now that simply comes up and out. So this one will needs to be uh, washed and removed all that sticky residue. The top comes off as well easily. That's what we're going to be painting. And underneath we can see lots of dust that you can simply clean with a um, brush. So the screen's a bit dirty too. Now you don't need to pull this apart any further unless you have an issue somewhere with, uh, with this um, optical sensor or anything else. Uh, this is working fine, so all I'm going to do is use a little bit of a Windex on the screen and just clean that. I have masked off all the necessary bits to respray in that silver rim. So I'm going to go spray paint that and then I'm going to take this to the sink and wash it with a toothbrush to get all the dirt and grime out. And then we're going to get all the sticky stuff of that little ring. So before we start cleaning this disc of the sticky residue, I'm going to show you another trick with those knobs. Uh, if you notice, the color white is really dull, and I'll show you how to bring it back to life. You simply grab the white out that you use on your paper, uh, squeeze a little bit out just to make sure that it's flowing fully, and then apply it into the groove and wipe it all the way down. If you see it spilling over the edge, that's all right. Just let it dry and after it dries, you just simply scrape it off with a finger and you can see the difference. So I'll do the second one. And by the time we've finished cleaning the disc, the white out would be fully dry. For cleaning this sticky residue of any uh, rubberized plastic, what you need to do is grab the simple bicarb soda, a little bit of water, get your finger wet, Dip it in baking soda or bicarb soda, do not use the baking powder, and start rubbing. 
that's all you need to do. Just have that paste and as you rub it in you will notice all that goo will disappear and you will have nice plastic. You can actually, you'll be able to see, oh, there's a lot of it here, it'll start turning black. You can already see there's a black coming off. So here is the ready result of the ring after I've used the bay, uh, bicarb soda. It looks nice and shiny just like new. So this is ready, all the buttons are washed. Now let's have a look at those uh, little knobs that should have dried by now. So now what we do, we're using a fingernail, just scrape the top and then scrape the sides as well. And now we have a really nice clean knob. So we're going to do the same with the left, that's the one before we removed it and after. So I'm going to do the same with this one. Just scrape it and then scrape the bottom. Use a bit of a paper towel to clean it, the rest off. And yeah, so here we have it, nice and bright knobs. I have reapplied the chrome for the disc, as you can see, it's nice and shiny. Also, I have added a sticker on top of this ring, as the old plastic had um, paint coming off it and it didn't look nice. So you can take this uh, film that you can buy at your local store, it's a self-adhesive vinyl. You can see it by a distinct pattern on the back. It doesn't have to be black, I've used black, but you can make any color with any pattern, depending on your style. So that turned out to be really nice. Now we're going to reassemble the main disc, so which is easily done. Simply just put it on top, as you can see there's a single pin. Make sure it's facing upwards when you're reinstalling, just apply it over the top. Then grab the ring itself and find that single pin on here as you can see and now you can insert it into that hook here and push it down over the top like that so now the spindle is ready so then reinstall those two screws and that section is done let's reassemble the interface so we we'll start by installing that um, jog I guess Simply line it up and using the screws tighten it down to the chassis. Now uh, let's reinstall all the buttons by starting by those panels. Don't forget little things uh, like those little rings or another one light guide for the um, flash card. So install that and the rest of the buttons that we've removed. So I have assembled all the boards, I've inserted all the buttons. So another thing, don't forget to plug all the ribbon cables in, especially the screen one. I'll do this right now. So that's all done. Everything is set. So now we're going to connect this one, which is interconnecting the main board with the interface. Put it in the grooves and don't forget the cable tie as well. Now let's assemble it and test it out. The CDJ is now fully refurbed. I have not plugged it in yet. I mean, I've plugged the cord in, but I have not turned it on so we can do it together. And here we go. So far, so good. So vinyl, let's try CDJ. That's orange. Let's uh, try um, reverse. That's purple. You can't really see. Um, maybe if I turn all the lights off. Uh, that wouldn't work either, I don't think. It is actually purple. <laughs> and it's a nice purple as well. Let's try turning the light on. Yeah, that doesn't work. It is hard to capture it, but yeah. So let's try Master Tempo and it lights up red, red but it's now slowly starting to change color. Looks good and let's try this one. Again lights up red and slowly starts cycling through the colors. That's pretty cool. 
uh, what other ones so we got um, those two and the cues so I'm gonna put the disk in and it's working just fine as you can see the buttons are really nice yeah those are working just fine and again it's really hard to see but those are not orange they actually warm white so is this one so I'm just gonna go and redo the second CDJ uh, just going to put that um, that's working just fine as well so I'm going to put the second sticker on the second CDJ and I'm going to replace all the LEDs and then we'll have a look at the decks when they all build together